Happy Ranch Wednesday, everybody. You are watching Spill the Ranch with yours truly, Noelle Cheney, aka Noelle Love Sloths. And I've recently been thinking maybe I need to do a rebrand. Noelle Loves Ranch? Question mark. Um, I actually have uh, thought about that for a long time. I've had several friends be like, why aren't you Noelle Loves Ranch? Because like your whole thing is ranch. I don't know. It's a long story. I can touch on the story about the origin of my TikTok handle another day, but I'm feeling extra saucy today. It's Wednesday. We're halfway through the week. It's almost Memorial weekend. I mean, life is good. School is over. Uh, I'm all moved into my house. Our house is furnished. Lots to unpack today. Um, I cannot wait for episode two. So I cannot start this episode without just saying thank you. Like all of your support and your love and your sweet comments about episode one. Seriously, like I am so appreciative of all of you. And this sounds cliche, but obviously none of this would be possible without you guys. And I am just so grateful for all of the support for episode one, especially because episode one it, it was a little rough. I won't lie. Um, this is definitely a little bit of a trial period for me. I've never done podcasts before. This is kind of out of my realm. It's a little bit out of my comfort zone. So, you know, the more I do it, the better I'm going to get at it, the more comfortable I will get sitting here with a microphone talking in front of you guys. And hopefully I'll be able to make more better quality content as well. So just thank you for sticking with me through all of this. Um, as well as I'm hoping to have a little bit of a more of a structured uh, podcast. And I think today is a bit more structured than last week. It was a little bit hard to follow along last week. I was, it was kind of like my, just my stream of consciousness. And um, I, I definitely got off topic a few times. But um Anyway, just thank you for being here with me. You guys are amazing. Thank you for all the comments and all the suggestions. If you ever have any suggestions for me, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comments. Um, I, I need constructive criticism. So um, in order for me to make this podcast better. So thank you for the suggestions and all the love. And seriously, I just really love you guys. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to start off this week just kind of um, going over things that have happened to me over the last week or so. So um, first thing, I feel like I live in Tornado Alley. Like Kansas City this past week has been stormy, stormy, stormy. I think there was a twister or two on Sunday night, actually a local high school um there was really heavy storms on Sunday night and I didn't even realize it until the morning, but apparently a school, uh, like their football field and a lot of their outdoor stuff was kind of ruined because of the, the strong winds. I don't know if there was actually a tornado that hit or what it was, but I, I really feel for their school because I saw on the news that they were, the, their girls soccer team was supposed to have a home game. They're undefeated and they had to move their game to, a different uh, venue. They, so they won't be able to have their home game. So I'm, I'm sad for them about that. Um, but um, hopefully the actual school building was okay and everything. But yeah, so storms, It's a, it's been a stormy past few weeks. Like we'll have like one or two days a week where we get like these crazy storms and then the rest of the week it's like beautiful outside. So I'm very grateful for the amazing weather and, um, you know, when it is sunny, it's like beautiful outside and I've been doing lots of walking, lots of walking. And I love my daily walks. Seriously. I haven't been running a lot lately, but I have been walking like literally every day. I also have a walking pad now. So if it is rainy or something, then I can walk on the walking pad. And I also have a basement now. And our basement is so cool. It's like so cold down there. So I can walk on the walking pad in the basement and not worry about making noise for my, you know, my neighbors who live below me or anything like that. 
So anyways, twisters um, are running amok in Kansas City this week. Apparently, there was supposed to be a tornado warning today, but it's beautiful and sunny out right now. So I don't know. It was looking a little gray and scary for a minute there. I thought we were maybe going to like get a really bad storm and then I was going to lose power, but that didn't happen, thankfully. Not yet. So knock on wood. We'll see. Um, something else that I've done over the past week is this past weekend... Um, Zach and I went to St. Louis to retrieve some furniture from his parents' house, sex, uh, from St. Louis. And his parents had a bunch of furniture that they didn't want anymore. And they gave it to us, which was so sweet. So yeah, over the past, well, we moved like 10 days ago. And then, so this past weekend we went and got the rest of the furniture. We had a lot of furniture. Like we already were mostly furnished in our house, which was really awesome. But they had a few finishing touches for us. They had a big couch for us to put in our basement, um, a couple glass pieces, one's for an entryway and the other one's a coffee table. They had a whole dining room set for us. They had like a, um, a cabinet where we put all of our like drinking glasses and our china. They had a set of china for us. They had, um, his aunt and uncle had pan patio furniture. So they had a, um, a, a, a round table, five chairs and a lounge chair and another small table. So and a lawnmower as well, which is really nice, even though it it's broken, we're working on fixing it. Um, so yeah, we have all of this awesome stuff that his parents just gave to us. And if you are a new homeowner, you know that it it's a very daunting task to have to furnish an entire house, especially if you're like if you're a first time homeowner and you're moving from like a smaller apartment, you just don't have that much furniture. And so it's so nice that we have our whole house furnished and we didn't really have to spend any money. So at least for now, you know, so that is uh, so, so nice. So grateful for his parents. His parents are like the nicest people in the entire world. I love Zach's parents and I'm so happy that they are my soon to be in-laws. So that's what I did this past weekend. Another thing about, I'm going to Actually, I'm going to come back to this uh, in my celebrity gossip segment about uh, buying a home and, and investing in a home. So um, next order of business is some exciting news in my personal life. So I am engaged to my BFF, <laughs> Zach. Um, he's the best person in the world. Anyways, we are engaged. We are getting married next summer. And I'm going wedding dress shopping in less than two weeks. And I, I'm so excited. Honestly, I haven't had that much time to think about it until this very moment because I've been so busy with the end of the school year and moving and all of this stuff. And now I have, now that school's over, I have a chance to sit down and actually look forward to this very exciting thing that I get to do. And so my mom, my sister, and Zach's mom are all traveling to Kansas City to be here with me to help me find the one. So um, yeah, I'm really excited for that. They will be staying with us. We'll have a little girly weekend. I have all of my appointments for which um, shops we're going to be going to. I have a reservation for one of my all-time favorite restaurants in Kansas City. It's called Farina. And um, I am excited to tell you guys a little bit more about the places I go to get dresses. Um, I've had some suggestions from one of my best friends who is also dress shopping right now because she's getting married um, like six weeks before uh, Zach and I are next summer. Um, and so I've had suggestions. My cousin, uh, she got her wedding dress here in Kansas City. So she had some good suggestions for me. So I'm really excited. We're going to four places and oh, I just hope I find the one. I'm so excited. Oh my God. It's crazy that like I might be finding the dress that I wear on my wedding day. I mean, I will be finding it, but like I might be finding it in 10 days. I could cry just thinking about it. Like, and I also just keep thinking about like, I just can't wait for Zach to see me in the dress. And like, that's over a year from now, seriously. But like, 
Oh my God, I can't wait for our wedding day. Okay, I'll talk about that another time, more wedding stuff, but wedding dress shopping is coming up very soon. So I have sort of um, transformed the meal of the week into meal of the weekend, meal of the woat. So I will give you my meal of the week. So the foods that I'm loving right now this week, but I also have a woat of the week. So my, my, something I'm, something I'm not loving. Okay. So let's start on a positive note with my meals of the week. I have two things I want to talk about today. First thing is crispy beef, like from a Chinese place. Okay. So there's this place in Kansas city that they have multiple locations and it's called bowlings and they have this like crispy beef. So it's, it's beef and it's battered like you would batter like chicken at a Chinese restaurant. Um, but it's beef and it's battered and it's crispy and it had this amazing sauce. And I tried that for the first time the other night when we got Chinese with Zach's parents when they were in town. So basically they were in town helping us unload all the furniture that we got from St. Louis from their house. So we got, um, we got Chinese one night because we were like, eh, we don't, we don't really care what we eat. Let's get Chinese takeout. So, um, we got so much food, by the way. Bowlings, if you're trying to feed a village, like go to Bowlings because they have, they give you, the portions are so big. We had so many leftovers and it was, it was so good. Everything was good. I mean, I always get their egg drop soup. It's always amazing. Zach's parents got um, like, uh, what was it? Sweet and sour soup. And they said it was really good. Their fried rice is amazing. Um, the crispy beef is great. Their chicken's good. Everything's delicious. And so that crispy beef, it's living rent-free in my head. I'm not kidding. I love it so much. Um, another thing I'm loving this week, and honestly, I could talk about this every week, every single week. It's my favorite thing. Spicy ramen. For the last two years, I've been eating spicy, 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 spicy ramen, like at least once a week, maybe more. So since the summer of 2022. And let me tell you, I love that stuff. It is my favorite thing ever since the first time I had it. Fun fact, the reason why I started eating it is because I, for a while, I was like loving ASMR. Like anytime I would need to take a nap or something, I would listen to someone like tapping on something and it would make me fall asleep, like ASMR. And I found this one girl who makes like eating ASMR videos, which definitely is not for everybody. But she, the first one I saw of hers was like, excuse me, she was eating spicy ramen and like the way she prepared it looked so good. So I basically just mimicked that. And her name is Sass ASMR, by the way, if you want to go look her up on YouTube, all of her like ASMR videos are so satisfying if you're into that. Um, but Ever since I saw that video, I was like, I need to try that. That looks so good. And I did. And I kind of prepared it the way she does. And ever since then, like, I've just been loving spicy ramen. And most recently, I have tried the spicy carbonara. And it is really good. Like, it's like really, really, really good. It's so creamy. So I prepare it basically the same way I prepare all my other ramen. I just don't put as much broth in it. Um, because I like it a little creamier. So you just noodles. I do like half of the spicy packet. I do the full powder packet, which is the cheese. And then on top of that, I put more mozzarella cheese and, um, green onions and spinach and boiled eggs. And let me tell you, it's so good. Oh my gosh. I think the spicy carbonara, like the bulldog noodles, I think that's my favorite flavor like it is really, really good. And I could talk about it every single week, but if you haven't tried spicy ramen, there's different brands you can get. Bulldog is probably the best and you can get those at some, um, at some grocery stores, or you can order them on Amazon or TikTok shop. Um, I have found Bulldog noodles at Hy-Vee before, but there's another brand that I get. I think it's called Sheen, like S H I N. And, um, that spicy ramen is pretty good too. So let me know if you try it and if you like it. Okay. Woat meal of the week. Soggy fries. 
whoever thinks soggy fry a soggy fry is good you're a psychopath like soggy fries are so gross and last week I made some fries for myself in the air fryer and I messed up and I didn't leave them in long enough and they were kind of soggy and I was like this is disgusting and I was too lazy to put them back in the air fryer and I just like ate them but I was like I hate my life (laughs) but I will tell you my favorite crispy so crispy I can't even do I can't do a crispy r I can't do that but so crispy the best fries my favorite fast food fries drum roll I don't know where to do it um freddy's freddy's has such good shoestring fries so they're thin so they crisp up really easily and they are so good they're always crispy it like if I want crispy fries, I'm going to Freddy's like, cause I know they're going to be good. So shout out to Freddy's for always having crispy fries. Another place that always also has crispy fries, Shake Shack, and they have crinkle cut fries and crinkle cut fries are not always crispy. And that's why sometimes I stay away from them. But seriously at Shake Shack, they are always so crispy and they are so good. Like, oh my God. And I haven't had Shake Shack in a long time, so I may need to go get that because their fries are so delicious. Let's move on to my teaching anecdote, teaching story of the week. I actually have two. So first of all, last Friday, May 17th, was the last day of school and it was a half day. And I wanted to do something fun for my students. I was only seeing each class for like 20 minutes I really wanted to do something food related, but I was like, I don't know what's going to be easy. Pizza. It's like too early because it's in the morning. And then like doing like bags of chips is just like lame. So I was like, oh, I can do donuts. Um, It's definitely not cheap to get nine dozen donuts. I'll tell you that. But I needed like 101 donuts to, to account for every single student. And of course, I ended up having extra. Then I just gave those to all the teachers. But so I had to get more than a hundred donuts. So I got nine dozen, which was 108. And, um, I think it was like $160 or something like that. So like not cheap, but definitely worth it because high schoolers love donuts. And as I talked about last week, high schoolers can be, um, bribed with like literally anything. Donuts, definitely one of those things that you can bribe them with. Not that I needed to bribe them. It was the last day of school, but I think I want to make that a thing where I like bring donuts at the end of the semester every year. It's definitely just like, I know like if my teachers had done that in high school, I would have loved that. And I used to eat a donut like every single day when I was in high school. (laughs) I don't know how I did that. Um, But yeah, I, I think the students really liked that I brought the donuts and I'm really glad that they enjoyed that. And I just wanted to do something special for them since you know, school is definitely not the most enjoyable thing for a lot of students and they made it through an entire school year and that's definitely something to celebrate and I wanted them to know how proud I was of all of them and just how grateful I was to have them as students. So yeah, so that was a really fun thing that I did um, or that we did on Friday last week. But another funny story I have um, is apparently my my Gen Z students, my they're, they're junior, so they're like 16 or 17. I was talking to them and it was my AP language and composition class. I have, I teach, uh, I teach half the time AP Lang and then half the time I taught creative writing this se- semester. And it was the day after the, the AP students took their exam. And we were just kind of chatting. I was chatting with one of my classes. It's one of my smaller classes. They only had like nine students. And I think only like five of them were there that day, but we were talking about somehow we got on the topic of TikTok and they were like, no, Miss Cheney, like we like Instagram reels. Like we don't watch TikTok anymore. We watch IG reels. And I was like, you guys are into reels? Like Instagram? Like what? (laughs) I was like, wait, okay. When I was your age, that was when Instagram was getting big. So when I was in when I was a freshman in high school, that's when I got my Instagram account. That was in 2011. And that's like right when it came out. I think it may have come out maybe a year before that, but it didn't get popular until really like 2011. And I remember my first 
posts, like some of my first posts, if you were around when Instagram first started, you know that everybody just put those god awful like filters over their pictures and we'd get like 11 likes and call it a day and it was like so fun low key like so my very first photo that i ever posted was a picture of my nike free if you remember nike freeze they're just like a type of tennis shoe from nike and so it was a picture of my one single nike free i had just gotten them they looked new they were perfect just my one single Nike free sitting on the floor and I put a filter over it and yeah, that was, that was it. Just a picture of my shoe and I probably got like two likes. I also posted another photo like pretty early on in my Instagram career. Um, and these are all private by the way, you won't be able to find these they are on my private Instagram, but, um, of like I braided my hair in a certain way. Like I put it like in the back of my head and then put, put it up in a bun. I don't know how to explain it. I'll insert a picture if I can. Um, <laughs> and I took a picture of the, of the braid and posted it on Instagram. Like, okay. Looking back, I'm like, why, why would I do that? <laughs> but like, that's what people did. And it was fun. And Instagram back then was like so chill. And now it's just like, so not chill. <laughs> And it has really turned into something so different than what it was at first. Um, Like back in the day when Snapchat and Instagram, when they didn't have stories, like I remember the first time stories were a thing and I thought it was so stupid. I was like, oh, they'll get rid of this right away. And no, no, no stories are like a way, a way of life. So I just thought it was funny that my students are getting into Instagram because it's like, it's coming full circle, like a decade later, you know, like it kind of went away for a little while. And like the younger generation wasn't so interested in Instagram, but now they're interested in it again. And I just think it's, it's funny. So I, I just thought it was funny because I thought they all loved TikTok. So the fact that they're all on IG reels is also just kind of funny. And I don't know. I just, I thought that was, that was pretty funny. Let's move on to our influencer tea of the week, aka our influencer ranch of the week. And um, the first thing I want to do is the TikTok trend that has been going around where you blow out as much air as you can and then you try to yell. So here we go. Okay, that is actually a funny trend. I have seen a lot of really not funny trends. And that one is kind of funny because everybody sounds so goofy with with a little... Like that's all you can get out by the time you let all your air out. So let's talk a little bit about TikTok trends because seriously, like there have been so many stupid trends that are just dumb and dangerous. So um, one that comes to mind, I remember last year there was a trend where it it was like a trend to like be rude to your teacher. Like why? Who, Who came up with that? That is so annoying. Like personally, of course, because I'm a teacher, but also just like, why would it be a trend to be rude to people? I just, I don't, I don't like it. Another one was the blackout challenge. And this one I actually had to look up because I didn't know what it meant. Um, So apparently there was a trend where you like restricted yourself from air in your lungs. And you would do that until you like passed out. Apparently, like also who came up with that? Why, Why would that be a trend? Um, and maybe it wasn't really a trend, but when I looked up crazy TikTok trends, that was one of the first ones. So whoever came up with that, shame on you. Stop doing that. Let's keep the, the trends fun and light, like the one I just did. Um, another one, and this I think was before TikTok, but it was, uh, 
the Tide Pods. It's not funny because kids actually were eating Tide Pods. And like, if you know anything about a Tide Pod, do you know what's in that? It's laundry detergent. Do you know what, if laundry detergent is good for your tummy? No, it's not. It's going to actually really mess you up if you eat it or, you know, in, ingest it. So whoever came up with that one, also, I have a bone to pick with you because like, what the heck? Why are you doing that? So what I want to know is what is the craziest TikTok trend you guys have seen? Let me know. I know there's so many other crazy ones out there. Leave them in the comments. We'll see which ones we think are the craziest. Okay. Part two of my influencer ranch of the week. Um, influencers buying houses. Just this week, there was another one. And so I have this list. So we have Hallie Kate. She bought her house in the Hamptons that she announced on Monday this week. We have Darcy, who we've kind of known, Darcy McQueenie. Um, she's been talking about it for a while. I think I want to say since like February or March, but like they're all moved in now and her house looks insanely nice, like huge, but also just really nice. So that's awesome. And then I know Emily Kaiser has talked briefly on her channel about it. I know that like, but I don't, they haven't moved yet. Um, and then there's also me. I also bought a house. I mean, I bought it with my fiance, but still, still big, big, adult moves happening. Um, But what excites me about Hallie, Darcy, and Emily, they are all younger than me, first of all. I think Hallie is 24, I think. Darcy is 23 or around there. She graduated college last year. And then Emily, I think she's like 25. So maybe she's only 24. I don't know. They're all like two, three, four years younger than me. And I can't even imagine buying a house two, three, four years ago, like even two years ago. And I think it's honestly a smart move. Um, Buying a home is an investment. You're not just losing that money on a down payment or whatever. That money is going into your investment, the house being your investment. And homes appreciate in value. They do not depreciate. So by the time you sell it, the house is going to be worth more than what you bought it for. It's going to increase in value. So like cars decrease in value most of the time. However, houses increase. So when you buy a house, that is an investment and it's a good investment most of the time. And So I'm very impressed to see all of these influencers. They are investing their money. I think it's really smart. It's uh, something that, I mean, I'm not really the kind of influencer who just buys a lot of stuff. Um, I mean, I, I buy plenty, but I really try to save my money because I, it's just kind of how I grew up and how my parents are and just kind of some values that they taught me. Like, they are very, very smart with money. And I definitely learned a bit from them. But I also have, you know, I know that this job influencing will not last forever. And I'm so lucky that I, I mean, I have teaching as well, but I think it's smart to be investing your money rather than just spending all of it on material things. Of course, every now and then, buy yourself a designer bag. I mean, I've done that before. But I think it's really cool seeing these young, hot, beautiful, smart, funny, um, talented influencers, um, you know, buying homes. Like, I just think that's so cool and so good for them. Like, I'm so excited for them. So I'm so excited for all of the content that will come out of it. So I just, honestly, I'm just like, I think they are all slaying the game and I just think it's so cool that they, they bought houses like so much fun anyways. Um, and buying a house has a lot of other perks as well. I mean, you're living in your own space that is yours. You can do whatever you want with it. There's no rules. 
You can be as loud as you want. You can walk as loudly as you want. Like I remember in my old apartment, I would walk really quietly because I didn't want to be noisy for my below neighbors because my above neighbors were so loud and I didn't want to be like them. So I always like walked really quietly, as quietly as I could. And um, my below neighbors were also really loud, which was kind of annoying. But yeah, I just, when I, a lot of people are maybe not so much like me. Like I would always try to be really quiet. Like I, I wouldn't turn my music up super loud. I wouldn't turn my TV super loud because I didn't want my neighbors to get mad at me. And a lot of people don't give a crap about that. And you can tell like I've had neighbors who clearly do not care about that. But I did. I didn't want to be that neighbor that everybody hated. And so I always was really cognizant of that stuff. But when you live in a house, you don't have to worry about it. I mean, you need to be nice to your neighbors, of course, but you can be as loud in your house as you want. No one's going to hear you, you know? And also, I had something else I wanted to say about houses. I don't know. It's just, it's just relaxing to me to be in a quieter place. I used to live like in the city and it was just loud. There was a hustle, hustle and bustle. Like I, I feel like I could never relax. I had to like carrying my groceries up to my apartment was always so annoying. Like it just like, it was always, everything was such a hassle and now it's not. And that's so nice. So, so excited for those Queens. If you are buying a house right now, congratulations. If you're thinking about it, if you're on the fence, you definitely should, because if you are in a financial position, one. And if you are in like a, a personal position where you are ready to, to buy a home or to buy property or to buy, you know, a condo or something like that, if you're ready, I think it's a good move because it's a good investment. So that's just my take. And I don't know that much about the housing market. Um, but I will say it's not a bad investment to buy a home. That's all I'll say. Okay, moving on to our celebrity stories of the week. And this is our last segment of today's episode. But we do have a lot to talk about. So a lot of people commented that they wanted me to talk about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. So of course, I'm going to. So let me start with my journey with both. Okay, so Taylor Swift, obviously, I've known of since I can remember. I mean, since I was a tween, she was making music and I've always listened to her music. I definitely have some albums where I, I am more familiar with than others, but I, I never really considered myself a Swifty. Um, and I still don't, I guess, but I have really over time developed such an appreciation just for her talent. Like she is so talented. She's such a talented musician and artist and songwriter. Her writing has improved so much over the years. There's so much meaning behind her lyrics. And I just really appreciate that, especially as someone who's like really into literature, really into poetry. And I just think she's so talented. And I really don't think anybody can deny that. You could like pretend like you don't think that, but if we're really talking here, she is very talented and she's a good songwriter. And I really think her music has improved over the years, like in quality, like her voice is stronger and there's just so much more to her music. And so I just have this appreciation for her and I really, really like her a lot. So that's kind of my story with Taylor and then Travis, I've always liked him. I mean, I I did I didn't grow up in Kansas City. So I didn't really become a Chiefs fan until college when I went to the University of Kansas. Um, which is almost 10 years ago now. Um, <laughs> but anyways, but I, I've always liked Travis Kelsey. I thought he was cool and you know, I like the the bromance that him and Patrick have. But um Anyways, I, so I really like them both as people. Now, when I found out that they were dating, 
oh my god i was so excited so let's just let's just go back to the very first chiefs game that taylor attended at arrowhead it was at the beginning of the season i think it was in september i don't remember if it was in yeah it would have been in september maybe it was october i don't know it was towards the beginning and there were some rumors swirling around that mm, Taylor Swift and Travis, apparently they're dating. Nobody really believed it. But then on this one fine Sunday afternoon, Taylor is at Arrowhead. What? My mind was blown. When I tell you like, okay, let me just paint a picture for where I was at. Okay. I was at this uh, sports bar in Brookside in Kansas City. It's called the Brooksider. So with a few of my friends, we had been out the night before. Some of us weren't feeling so well, <laughs> but we all decided to go to the Brooksider and watch, uh, watch the Chiefs game. And when I tell you how loudly that entire bar started cheering when Taylor was shown on TV at the game. Everybody went crazy. The atmosphere was amazing. Like it was so exciting. When she when when they showed her for the first time on TV, everybody like screamed. I was like, "Oh my god, it's Taylor. Like she's there. She's actually there." And that's when we all realized like, "Oh, they're actually dating." They're actually dating. Taylor and Travis. Like <laughs> what? And then, you know, we started to get used to it as the season went on. Taylor went to a lot of games. And, but it was still so exciting every single time we saw her at a Chiefs game. And I think it did increase ticket prices because Zach and I wanted to go to a Chiefs game last season. Ticket prices were insane. To sit really high up in the worst seats, it was like three to $400. That's a lot. Usually on a normal year, you could get those up high seats for maybe like 150. They were double that. So, and I, I think it's because of Taylor Swift, but who knows? So I love them together. I think they are so cute together when they kissed on the field after the Super Bowl. That was anything a Swifty could ever want to see, honestly, like that, that was very fun and exciting. So recently, I think last week it broke that they, her and Travis were in Italy. They were, you know, maybe she's, she went there in between shows in Europe and he's there and they were having apparently a nice little lover's getaway in Italy. I didn't really look up any pictures because I feel those are, those, they're trying to have a private time. They're trying to be a normal couple with private time. They'll never be normal, of course, but because they're Taylor Swift is Taylor Swift, one of the most famous people in the world. Travis Kelsey, a lot of people know who he is too, one of the best tight ends ever. And so they're never going to be normal. But I feel that time for them really just was for them. And so I didn't really even go out seeking pictures. I saw one against my will. Um, so I didn't even really look it up. I just heard that, that they were in Italy and so fun for them. And I hope they had a great time. Next thing, Kelsey Jam. So I guess the Kelsey brothers hosted like a, or maybe it was just Travis, hosted like a concert where there are multiple artists. And they did that at the Outdoor Amphitheater here in Kansas City. And that was this past weekend. Unfortunately, I could not go. But, and I, I also wasn't invited. I know of quite a few awesome Kansas City influencers, and I saw that some of them got to go and they were invited um, by some cool brands. And I did have a little bit of jealousy, I won't lie, but it looked really fun. And um, my goal this year has been kind of to just reach out to more local businesses in Kansas City because I want to showcase all of the amazing things we have to offer here in KC. And I think I just need to be a little bit more um, outgoing and, uh, you know, 
reaching out to the brands that, you know, that I really appreciate. So that's kind of been a goal. I've, I put together a media kit and I've kind of been trying to reach out to places here and there. And hopefully this summer I'll have more time to do that. Okay. Um, our last story has to do with a reality TV show that I've been pretty into for the past few years. I got into it. I want to say during COVID maybe. And it's a Bravo reality TV show. I don't watch a lot of reality TV, but I do like some Bravo shows. I, I used to watch um, Real Housewives of New York, but I really only watched like the first few seasons and those OG seasons are so good. Um, and then I also really like Southern Charm. But the show that I've literally seen every single episode of multiple times is Summer House. And if you are a Bravo person, you know that um, we're nearing the end of this season for Summer House. I think there's two episodes left and then we'll have the um, the reunion, which I'm so excited for. The reunion is going to be insane. Um, so if you know anything about Summer House, well, if you don't know anything about Summer House, it is a reality show where a group of, um, you know, late 20s, 30s aged um, people from New York City or who live in New York, each weekend they go up to the Hamptons and they have this summer house where they all stay. And that's basically where the show takes place at, is at the house. And it has this amazing pool and, you know, they drink a lot of rosé and there's drama and all that. And it's just a really entertaining show. I've always really liked it. And um, there's been a little bit of drama this season with two of the couples Lindsay and Carl, which we already know that they broke up back in like September, but we're watching last summer. So what we're watching right now happened last summer in 2023 and they were still together. They were engaged and okay, I'm going to tell you which team I'm on. I never thought I would ever say this. I am team Lindsay right now. She's been very cool, calm, and collected this whole season, she hasn't really like done anything crazy. Like in the past seasons, I'm not going to speak for her behavior on the other seasons. She has said and done things that are crazy. But this season, she's been like really just normal. Like she, she, she's been very reasonable. Like, and Carl's kind of been the one that's been, you know, poking at her and like, initiating fights and stuff like that. And so right now I'm team Lindsay. So we'll see what happens the rest of the season. I'm so excited. Another thing, um, I mean, Amanda and Kyle, they always have drama. I, part of me thinks that that is just for the show. I think their relationship is probably a lot different off camera than on because on TV, it seems like they're always fighting, but like they've been together for almost 10 years. So they must have a better relationship off camera. But I will say, I think uh, if Amanda made a swimsuit bikini line, it would be so good. She always wears the cutest swimsuits on this show. And her last name, I think I'm saying this right. I hope I am. Batula. She could name her her, um, her business, her bikini business, Batula's Bikinis. Isn't that cute? I think that'd be cute. So Amanda, if you're listening to this, there's a suggestion for you. But I'm sure whatever you make is going to be amazing because Amanda's like super creative. Her and Kyle created Loverboy, which is um, a spiked tease. You can get them at the liquor store. Um, and like they're de- all of their like graphic design is like looks so good. And I'm pretty sure that was all Amanda. So whatever she designs, I know it's going to be good. Paige is a queen. I love Paige so much. She's always the voice of reason. And I just, I really like this season so far. I mean, I like every season, but this season in particular is really good. It's a good group of people. Fun fact, there is a a new guy that's on the show. He's like, this is his first time on it. His name's West. He's from Missouri. And um, he like came to Kansas City last month for a meet and greet um, at a bar called Kelly's. Kelly's is my favorite bar of all time. It was like, it's been my favorite bar ever since I moved to Kansas City five years ago. And so it was just so fitting that I got to go there, meet West. He was really, really nice. So yeah, they just have a really good cast. Um, And the season's really good. So that wraps up my celebrity story of the week. 
we are done with this episode. So thank you so much for joining me this week. Seriously, after last week, I know last week's episode was not the best. I'm working on improving it. I hope this week's is better and a little more interesting for you guys. And I just hope you enjoy it. And I'm I'm just so grateful for all of your love and all of your support and all of your suggestions. Please leave sub- subject suggestions for me. I love constructive criticism. Your support means the world to me. Thank you all for listening. Um, and if you're still here, happy Ranch Wednesday. We are halfway through the week. And I hope you have a very saucy rest of your week. I will see you guys next Wednesday. Bye.